Hi, I'm Ella, also known as Handmade Millennial, and welcome to the video sew along tutorial for ME2058, this color blocked angular coat. Okay, this is my favorite sewing pattern that I have put out yet. There's a couple different reasons for that. I love sewing coats. I think it's so fun. There's a lot of skill building features that come with sewing coats. And in this pattern in particular, a couple of those things are snap closures, zippered welt pockets, and fully lining a jacket. Hopefully this video tutorial makes it really easy for you to follow along on how to do all of those things. They're not necessarily difficult at all, honestly, so I think you're gonna have a lot of fun sewing this jacket. It's bright, it's bold, it's beautiful, it's got striking angles. Um, I was really inspired with this design because I love sharp angles and lines and um, as well as color blocking. I love bright colors. I love the way that we can create something so unique and interesting by mashing different colors together. It's a lot of fun and there's so much room for creativity with this coat as well. I would love to see some versions, maybe even with an all over color could be really fun or uh, potentially with a print for one of the color blocking portions. There's a lot of ways to mix and match and have so much fun and creativity with this design. So I hope that you love this pattern. A couple of the features I wanted to talk about with this coat include some of the things you'll notice. It has a band collar, the snap closures I mentioned. Again, fully lined. Here's what those zippered welt pockets look like. And you'll notice that the design is asymmetrical which I just think is so fun and creative. And it features an accent sleeve as well as wrapping around to the back. Some of the fabrics that I might recommend for this coat, I love it in wool coating, a quilted fabric like this kind. It could be really good in three shades of denim. Cotton twill could be really nice. Any fabric that you think feels heavy enough that it would make a nice jacket, I would say go for it. And then in terms of a linings, I like linings in particular that are kind of cool to the touch and smooth and slippery so that when you slip your arms into them, it just feels like really soft and slides on easily. That's something to definitely keep in mind. Um, one of the things that's really nice about the features of this jacket and the color blocking in particular is that if you have smaller pieces of fabric, you can potentially use some scrappier pieces to do some of the um, color blocked pieces. I also like to choose a main fabric to be something that is kind of maybe a little more neutral or a color that you are really comfortable with and then choose the two contrast colors um, as two colors that go along well with that color but are a little bit more bold or interesting. Uh, have fun with it. It's yeah, there's so many possibilities for this design and so many ways that you can make it come to life. It's a lot of fun. On the pattern pieces itself, themselves, you'll see that it says main fabric, lining, contrast one, or contrast two. So contrast one is the color that you see the second to the most of. So it's the color with the accent sleeve and um, the front, front right portion. So in this main photo, it's this brown color is contrast one, and contrast two is the piece that you only that you need the least fabric of. It's just this front portion here. So you really don't need much of contrast to it all because this is the only place that that color shows up. It can be a little bit confusing to manage um, as you're cutting what pieces of each color you're going to need. So be really careful about after cutting out your pieces and as you're cutting, um, I recommend cutting one color at a time and just looking through and making sure that you have all the right pieces for the main fabric, cut out the main in that one color, take contrast two or contrast one, cut out the two pieces, three pieces that are necessary in contrast one, and then there's just one piece necessary in contrast two, as well as the pockets actually, it didn't include the pockets in those numbers, so keep that in mind as well. Some of the notions you're gonna need for this pattern, 
are a set of heavy duty snaps. These ones are 5 eighths of an inch, but you can use a slightly smaller or larger snap, all personal preference for you. Um, these Dritz heavy duty ones I really like because you can hammer them on versus some other types of snaps you need a snap setting machine for. So these are really handy. You're also going to need two seven inch zippers for the welt pockets. You can also use longer zippers and um, shorten them to be the perfect length for the zippered welt pocket. So choose that accordingly. I like these brass zippers in particular. I think they're kind of fun um, for these pockets, but you can use whatever kind that you like. As you get started with cutting out this project, just remember to be really careful about which pieces are in which color. Don't forget your interfacing will also be necessary. I hope that you have a lot of fun sewing this pattern. I hope that this video tutorial is really helpful for you as we figure out together some of the features and elements to this design. I personally find that I can sew this coat up in about 12 hours and you may or may not be as speedy or I might be slower than you so just keep that in mind. Um, there are a few things that you'll want to keep in mind for the process too. We're going to be doing some hand sewing along the way that creates a really beautiful and fine finish. I'm sure you can also find ways to cheat on a machine as well but I really recommend trying the really clean beautiful hand finishes especially for pure parts of the lining. We're also going to be working with pattern pieces that have a lot of bias to them, these angular designs. There's a lot of bias there, so be careful not to stretch out your, your pattern pieces for the front and the back on that purpose. Just be cautious about that. And I hope you just have a lot of fun sewing this pattern and that you love it as much as I do. This is my favorite sewing pattern that I have produced yet it the fit is relaxed but beautiful it's kind of elevated but fun um i personally wear this jacket like almost every single week i love it sewing coats is a lot of fun if you haven't sewn a coat before and i hope that you enjoy this process sewing along with me let's get started so we're going to start with all of the pieces necessary for the lining of the jacket so first we're going to need two of pattern piece 13, the back lining. Make sure you have one pair. Then we have two of pattern piece 12, the front lining. You should have one pair of the front lining pieces. You're going to need two of the pocket linings, pattern piece seven, one pair. You'll also need two of pattern piece 14, which is the sleeve and I unfortunately ran out of lining fabric and realized a little too late so mine doesn't match, but yours should. Next up we're going to cut out the pieces for the main part of the jacket. I've got two of the collar pieces. This is pattern piece 10. Make sure you've got your markings down. Next is pattern piece 11, the front facing. You're going to want two of these in the main fabric. You will need one sleeve, pattern piece 14, in the main fabric. One of the upper left front, pattern piece 3. one of the upper right front pattern piece one and make sure that these two pieces are reflected as a pair. You will need one of pattern piece eight, the upper back. Just one. Next, we're going to do the pattern pieces for the first contrast fabric, which is the color that is second most represented, um, the color that has a sleeve in the contrast color. So the first piece is a welt pocket, just one in your second color, your contrast color one. Contrast one also has the lower back angled piece. This is pattern piece number nine.
You will need one of the lower left front. This is piece number four and make sure you mark the welt pockets boundaries on there and the markings. And then you'll need one sleeve pattern piece 14. Make sure you mark all of the dots and clip the notches on that. We'll also want one of pocket piece number six, the actual pocket. And then in contrast color number two, we will also want one more pocket piece number six. We'll also want one more welt number five. And then the lower right front number two with the welt markings included there. And that is all of our main fabric pieces. Don't forget interfacing. We're going to want two more welt pieces in the interfacing, two more facings in an interfacing appropriate for the fabric that you've selected, as well as one interfaced collar piece. And that's all the pattern pieces we need. First thing we're going to do to start is lay out on a surface all of your front coat main pieces. And we're going to make sure that they properly reflect each other and that they match like this. And then we're going to sew for the right and the left independently, sew the two front and bottom portions together. So go ahead and just place them right sides together along the angle. Let's start with the front right pieces. Something I want you to pay special attention to as we're pinning these pieces together is that the edges of these color blocked pieces should be misaligned in this way with one color kind of peeking out over each edge. Essentially, for me to explain why this is necessary, I want you to imagine we're going to sew at a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and just go ahead and pin base that so that when we open it up, you'll see perfectly at a 5 eighths inch seam allowance, the edge is smooth, or is a continuous line. Versus if we had aligned these at that edge and then sewn at a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you see that this top part actually is not a smooth line, this part goes over. So that's why we do that. Start by matching the two notches and then just smooth it over to each edge and then give that a pin base before you sew it down. That will save you a lot of time to just pin it in place, check your seam allowance carefully and then open that up. Like this actually is not perfect. I'm gonna get that just right. Here we go. I'm gonna do this for both sides and then take that to the sewing machine. Okay. And then even with that little offset, we're going to just make sure we have the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance just right and then sew it as normal. Okay, now that we have these sewn, I want you to double check that you have both a right and a left, that you didn't reverse any of your color block pieces. Just double check before you keep going. And then after you've done that and you're sure you feel confident about a right front and a left front, go ahead and 
grade the seam allowances on the color blocking. So just give them a little clipping. This is a wool coating and I found it easier to do the seam allowances graded. Um, one a little bit longer than the other for this really bulky fabric to make it flat. And then I want you to go ahead and take it to the iron and press it upwards. So I've already done that, it's been pressed upwards. A little tip that I found really helpful as well, if you're making your jacket out of a wool coating or another really bulky fabric, is that you can use a piece of wood to get your seams really flat. So I'll go ahead and steam thoroughly, and then immediately afterwards, just take a little hunk of wood, this is a piece of poplar from the lumber store, and just press it, hold it down, and you get a really sharp, flat, seam. That's completely optional. Just a helpful little tip that I have picked up over the, my time of coat sewing. Next up, we're going to take our back pieces, the upper back and the lower back, and we're going to sew these two pieces together as well. At first glance, you'll notice that this piece looks a little odd. The lower piece doesn't look like it'll fit with the upper piece, but I assure you that it will. So go ahead and just lay that out. Make sure it's you have them correctly aligned. This makes one back piece. And then flip it right sides together. And first we're gonna start by matching those notches again on both pieces. And then when we get to the edges in particular, we're going to do the same thing that we did before and just pin baste, check where the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance will lie. Pin baste that and then check that it aligns before you sew. And then we're going to sew along this edge. Go ahead and take it to the machine. I'm going to take the front and back pieces now and stay stitch the neckline edge of each of these pieces from the direction of the outer collar inwards just so that the neckline doesn't stretch out on these pieces. So for here I'll do two different lines within the seam allowance, just a normal stitch to prevent that stretching. No need to back stitch. And there's what that stay stitch looks like. Now we're going to start with the zippered welt pockets of the front of the jacket. So take your two welt pieces and we're going to press them in half right sides together. Now I want to make a note that in the instructions there's a typo, it says wrong sides together, it's right sides together. Okay, take that to the iron and give it a good press. I've already pressed this one. After you do that, we're going to sew along the edges of the zippered welt pocket starting at the fold here and go down, turn a corner, leave a gap, backstitch, leave a gap, and then sew along the other sides so that we're forming a, a little welt with a gap to be able to open it up. This is what it looks like here. I'll show you what I mean about how we sew this, the welt. So that's the folded edge there. It's been nicely pressed. We're gonna sew it a five eighths of an inch seam allowance as per usual. Presser foot pivot. And that's what this looks like. Now we're going to trim the seams so that we can reduce some of the bulk. I'm 
going to trim pretty close to this corner here, about an eighth of an inch. There you go. Now we need to turn this one inside out. And I'm going to take that to the iron and press it. Okay, so next step is sewing the zippered well pocket. I wanted to show you this one more time so you can see what we're trying to achieve here. It's essentially a zippered well pocket with a welt edge stitched on top. You know, I can't show you the back at the moment because it's fully lined, but that is what we're going for. And before we get started, we're gonna pull out all of the pieces that we're going to need for this part of the process. Take the front of the coat. Please make sure that you have all of these markings from the pattern piece very carefully outlined here. So you'll see I've got two dots at the top, two dots as a part of the welt, the bounding box, the slash line, the little triangle. Make sure you have all of that really carefully marked out because it's going to be hugely helpful to you your seven inch zipper, our welts that we created with the gap still in the middle, and then we have two pocket pieces here. This is the pocket piece itself that's the same fabric as the contrast here, and that's really helpful because it will be visible when you open the pocket, so it's nice that it's the same color. And then we also have a pocket lining piece Please just make sure that you've got your markings carefully transferred for both the pocket lining piece and the main pocket piece. That's gonna make this a lot easier for you and less confusing as we go about making the zippered welt pocket. If you are a little bit nervous or you haven't tried a zippered welt pocket before, you could test this out, maybe even with just the welt and um, some fabric and do a tester version first to make sure that you like how it looks and that you feel a little bit more comfortable before we do it on the main fabric where there will be slashing through the middle. So this is one of those processes where it helps to be very meticulous and careful as we're going about doing it. And overall, Thanks to this video, I'm sure you have got this. So the first thing we're going to need to do is take this main fabric and we're going to place the pocket lining on here, right sides together, right sides together with the rounded part of the pocket facing the middle or the, this is where the snap closures will be of the jacket. So as you take a look, like right now, this is the armhole and this is my front center. And this rounded part of the pocket is facing the front center. Now I'm going to match my three dots here with the same three corresponding dots on this. So that where we're going to stitch along where these dots are, is at the edge of that bounding box. So carefully pin that in place and then we're going to stitch it down. I forgot to mention that if you would like to um, overlock the edges of your pocket pieces. Go ahead and do that now. You don't necessarily need to because they are within the lining. They're most likely not going to fray, but this particular for me, this fabric was starting to ravel. So I went ahead and overlocked that. And then I'm not really going to bother with my wool coating because this fabric doesn't really fray very much and it will all be contained within the lining. So from here, Let's just make sure that where we have the dots at that 5 eighths of an inch from the edge is aligned with the bounding box. I'm feeling pretty good about that. And then we're going to stitch from this dot to this dot down here, just that portion. Um, it would be wise to base this first, check your placement, and then stitch a final line. 
That's up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and take this to the machine. I'm just checking my placement here. And I can see the entire box and it's right along that edge. That's what we're intending. Next step, we're gonna do something a little bit scary. We're going to slash the fabric. Okay, so I've got my little triangle portion carefully marked there. We're gonna start with that little triangle portion. And I'm gonna use a sharp seam ripper. You could also use scissors or something. And just start. And we're gonna rip along that middle line. That's the slashing line. I started the hole and then I'm gonna follow up with scissors. Should be right in the middle of the banding box. And now that I've gone right up to the tip of that triangle, I'm going to just clip diagonally into the triangle and then go back and do the same. On the bottom portion, we're gonna clip into the edges diagonally. just clipped diagonally into these edges. Now, the next step here is to turn this whole thing to the wrong side of the fabric. So that was the right side. I'm returning to the wrong side of the fabric. and flip and press this open from this side. I'm going to pull this back in a sharp line and press that open, press these little tabs open right along that bounding box line. I'm gonna press this back as well. So just go ahead and iron that gap. Now that we have that gap, it should look something like this. This is from the right side of the fabric with the pocket bag pulling towards the center front. So imagine you slip your hand in this direction. Pocket bag's folded that way. We're gonna take our zipper and from underneath, position that So there's just enough for the zipper top and the zipper gap at the bottom. Now we're gonna pin this in place before we edge stitch around all four corners. And there we are, that's what that buttoned zippered weld looks like. So you'll notice I leave a little bit of a gap there of the between the zipper teeth and the fabric, but not too much. And really ensuring that the edges and the little triangle tabs are all folded backwards. No raw edges are coming out there. We're now going to switch to our machine and use a zipper foot to stitch all the way around all four corners. I'm going to start at this top corner, making sure the pocket bag is pulled out of the way. Back stitching. And just stitch a scant. Mm, I'm doing about a quarter inch, maybe a little less than a quarter inch away from the edge. Even an eighth inch would be great. Mm -hmm. 
honestly as close as you can get. Making sure that folded edge. If your zipper, well, let's pull it all the way down. I'm gonna pull it all the way down. Actually, gonna back stitch here. Zipper all the way up. stitch. There we go. So it's right on the edge. So I stopped to back stitch there and then pull the zip down to get it out of the way. And then we're gonna keep going. I'm gonna make sure the edges here are just nicely aligned by zipping up close. Checking that alignment. Leaving the needle in, lifting the presser foot, twisting, making sure that tab is down. I'm almost gonna hold these together as if they're zipped. And there we go, our zippered welt. That's just the beginning. Next step, we're going to take our pocket piece. This is the piece that's visible when you open the zippered welt and align it here with the side that you want visible from inside the pocket to be down. I think it's right sides together. And we're gonna pin this along all four corners matching dots. And markings here, you'll see these two little dots match with the top of the bounding box dots. As well as these small dots should match with the bounding box.
and the notches at the bottoms of the pocket bags should match as well. And now we are going to essentially pull this pocket bag loose from the main part of the coat. And we're going to start here and stitch all the way around, pivoting, and then stitching just the edge of the zipper tape to the pocket bag itself to secure that all the way around, but we're never catching the main part of the coat. Folding back the coat out of the way. So I'm gonna start here. Actually, let's do it from this side. I'm gonna get as close to this edge here as I can. Hold on, my machine's giving me a little grief. Here we go. And then right when we get to where we would hit the main part of the coat again, You'll see this is the main portion of the coat. Lift, pivot, and just sew this last tab down. Lastly, you'll see we have a little gap here. And we're going to again, just so we have the zipper tape and the pocket bag and a little bit of the main coat seam allowance. All we're going to stitch here is those two pieces. That is what that should look like. Open it up, make sure that you have mobility. This one's looking good, very clean. Okay, I'm really loving how this is looking so far. That little peekaboo of the same fabric, how clean the pocket finish is. It's looking really good. The zipper is zipping up nicely. The last thing is to take our welt with that gap, make sure those edges are aligned, feel good about the corners here. And we're going to essentially edge stitch this in place. Ideally, you still have these dots, mine are pretty faint, to align your welt with. I'm gonna use this gap side out and place it towards um, where the curve of the pocket bag is. This is the center front of the jacket. And we're going to use the welt to just barely hide the zipper. And we're gonna pin this in place with just the welt to the main part of the jacket, not catching the pocket bag because we don't wanna stitch through the pocket bag itself and lose that mobility we've created.
Okay, we've got that roughly pinned in place here. It's covering the zipper. And we do not have any of the pocket bag captured underneath. Let's take that to the machine. We're essentially going to stitch this way along the bottom of the welt, that's where the gap is, to the top, not closing off our access to the zipper. This is the side seam. I have my welt placed so that my stitch line will be outside of the pocket bag, so I don't need to pull this out of the way, but beware of that if your stitching of your pocket bag is far the way enough that your welt would cut off any mobility of your pocket bag there. So you may need to pull this out of the way, but right now I don't because I'll be stitching outside of that seam allowance. I'm gonna start at that top corner and try to get as close to the edge as possible. I prefer it about somewhere between a quarter and an eighth inch from the edge. Don't forget to backstitch. Leave your needle in, lift the presser foot up and twist. And we're going to also make sure that we're pulling the pocket bag from this way to the opposite direction out of the way of the welt so that we don't sew our pocket bags closed. And just check as I go that the pocket bag is still out of the way. As you approach the corner there, leave the needle in, lift the presser foot up. If you need to pull that edge of the pocket bag out of the way, be sure to do that. Actually, it looks like I'm gonna need to back stitch here before I do my last corner. And I'm going to need to flip this back the correct direction so that I don't sew it backwards. And we're gonna sew this last corner of the welt, making sure everything is really smooth. And to be clear here, I'm sewing through the welt, the main part of the jacket, and then the seam allowances of the pocket bag. And there we have it, a zippered welt pocket. Beautiful. Next up, we're going to stitch the front of the jacket to the back of the jacket at the shoulder seams. So let's lay the back right side up. I'm going to lay the left and right on top of that, right sides together.
matching our notches here and the edges and pin this at the shoulders here. All right, we're going to stitch this at the same 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Take that to the machine and go for it. Now that we've stitched these shoulder seams, go ahead and take those to the iron and press that seam open on both sides. And then we'll come back. Now I've got my jacket laid open with the right side up. This is the front portions. That's the back over here. And we're just going to check in regarding the sleeves. I have one neutral sleeve and one accent sleeve. The design is intended. This is the main fabric. This is contrast one. And for me, this is contrast two. The design is intended to have the contrast one sleeve on the side with contrast two and the neutral sleeve on the side with contrast one. So that's how we're going to do it. Now we're going to take this side of the coat, open up the sleeve. We've got the three dot markings on there and the three dot markings on here, as well as notches. And we're gonna lay this out right sides together, aligning two notches with two notches here, the center seam to the middle dot, another notch to a notch and then pin that all the way around and then we're going to stitch it up next. Now we're going to stitch the sleeve onto the body at the same 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, carefully easing some of these corners. Now we're going to stitch this down. Making sure as we're easing the corners that we're keeping the edges aligned. Take this to your iron and press this seam open. That's what the sleeve looks like now. Main, contrast one, contrast two. So press this with the seam allowance away from the sleeve going towards the body, and then go ahead and do the same thing with the next sleeve on the other side. I now have the coat laid evenly flat with right sides together front to back, right sides together, and we're going to pin and then stitch the entire side seam all the way up to the sleeve. So align the two sleeve pieces, fold it in half, and we're going to pin this all the way here. One thing I want you to be cautious of as you're pinning together is at these angled parts to really connect them and almost imagine where you're going to stitch that 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Hold it in place, open it, and make sure that it's still lined up. I'm gonna pin base this one in place. That's about my 5 eighths. Opening it up again and it is nicely aligned. Be careful about that on both sides. 
I'm going to make sure that my notches are connected here on the sleeves as well. Now we're going to take this in the machine starting at the bottom, stitch all the way up, pivot at the armhole, and go all the way down. So when we're approaching the turn between the sleeve and the body, we're going to take this seam edge of the sleeve and sew 5 eighths of an inch past it. And this is where we'll leave the needle in, lift up the presser foot, and rotate. And then just sew straight down, rest. And then once we've sewn that once, we're gonna go back and sew it again, just on the inside, about an eighth of an inch to the side, just to reinforce that seam. Right up against it. So first things first, make sure you take that side seam we just sewed over to your iron and press those seams open all the way up the sleeve, all the way up the side. And then give it a try on for size, I think would be a smart move and see how you're liking the fit so far. After you do that, come back and we're going to turn up the sleeve hem. I'm gonna use my sleeve board, but you obviously don't need one to be able to turn up a hem. We're gonna turn it up by about that much. But try it on, see how you like the sleeve length for yourself. And then once I have that in place, I'm going to iron this into place. All the way around on both sleeves. And after we iron this up, we're gonna baste it at the machine. If your machine has a free arm, this is a great time to pull that out. And then we're going to stitch that sleeve hem in place all the way around the cuff. And there we are. Inside should look like that, and that will get covered up later with the sleeve lining. Do that for both sleeves. Next up, we're going to attach the neck band to the main part of the jacket. So this is the coat right sides up. You can see wrong sides down. And we've got our two neck band pieces, one that I've gone ahead and interfaced and one that's not. We're going to take the interface neck band and place it right sides together with this curved edge outward. Place that right sides together all the way around and pin in place. There should be some dots that we're going to match on either end. You may find that you may need to clip into the stay stitching to be able to stretch this all the way around, or maybe you can manipulate it. This dot matches to the seam here. I would just use a lot of pins if it feels necessary. 
pin that all the way around and then we're going to stitch it in place. Then take that to the machine and go ahead and stitch in place all the way around. Now that we have this neckband sewn, we're going to reduce some of the bulk here by trimming down the seam allowance. I'm gonna leave just barely more than a quarter inch. Careful not to cut into your coat. We're just cutting the two layers of seam allowance and we're gonna cut all the way around. We're going to start constructing our lining now. Take your two facing pieces and we're going to stay stitch these just in between the two notches we have here on the outside. So that means just running a single line of stitching within the seam allowance. So let's say maybe a little more than a quarter inch away from the edge of the fabric and just do that so that these pieces will not stretch out. All right, so we're going to take both of the main facing pieces and then also the front part, the two front lining pieces. And we're now going to sew these together, kind of matching. You see that curve, how they kind of fit together? Do you see how they kind of fit together there? We're going to pin them right sides together and it's going to take a lot of easing along this curve here. So the most important part is to start with the top edges and then also align the notches. And then from there, just gently ease the rest of the facings facing to the lining. See, that's what that gap looks like. And then we're going to carefully sew this at the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then go ahead and stop at the bottom where there's a small dot at the bottom of the facing. And back stitch and stop that. So that the bottom couple inches of the lining and the facing are not attached. We're going to come back for that later. After you've gone ahead and sewn one, go ahead and sew the same piece on the other side and then press this open, nice and smooth. And there's the front of your jacket that will be against your skin. Our next step is to take the two back lining pieces and we're going to sew the center back seam. So go ahead and place them right sides together. Pin, and we will stitch this part at a normal seam allowance before we come back afterwards and sew the pleat. Make sure you match your notches here. Next up, now that we have our center back sewn and we've got the back lining together, we're going to form a single pleat in this back lining that will provide a little bit more mobility through the back when wearing the jacket. So I've got my back lining piece here and if you didn't mark this on your pattern piece already, you'll notice that there is a pleat line that goes from the top down to the waist. And this is basically showing us where to place a fold for a single pleat. So you don't have to do it on both sides. You can do it on just one side. And if you didn't mark it, just go ahead and line this up and imagine that 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance is removed from there. Line this up. And from here, and you can mark on your fabric the pleat all the way down. I have done. And then to help form the pleat, you can also baste along that entire line 
to form a guide and then fold the entire thing over to one side and iron that in place. After we give that a good ironing, that's the pleat forming, I'm just gonna baste this in place across the top here so that we can hold this pleating together. I've already ironed this, but make sure you go ahead and do that. There's my basted pleat. Now to form the front to the back, we've got our front lining pieces and our back lining pieces. And let's lay those right sides together. And then we're going to stitch a seam at the shoulder seam. So go ahead and pin and stitch these two shoulder seams. Don't forget to match the center notches at the top of the shoulder seams as well. Shoulder seams are sewn. Now we're going to just stay stitch all around this entire neckline to prevent that from stretching. Within the seam allowance, just a normal stitch. Next, we're going to attach the lining sleeves to the body in the same manner as we did for the main part of the coat. So my sleeves are um, a contrast fabric because I started cutting out this lining and then realized I was just a little bit short for both sleeves, but your sleeves will be the same fabric for you. So make sure that you have the double notch to double notch and single notch to single notch that you've chosen the right sleeve and then match those notches as well as the center dot to the shoulder seam and the other dots to each other and pin this in place. We're also going to reinforce here where the sleeve lining and the main body meet and just sew an additional line of stitching just on an inch of either side of our pivot there to really ensure that this is secure. So now that we've formed that nice pleat in the center back, I'm going to Remove my basting stitches because I don't think they look very nice. Okay, and now we'll carry on. The lining now, right sides up, the facing upwards, and the other neckband edge piece that's not interfaced. We're going to align it right sides together with the curved edges facing downwards and pin this around matching the notches and the dots just as we did with the coat and stitching this in place. And then similar to what we did to the main part of the jacket, we're going to trim the seam as well. All right, y'all, we are getting ready for the grand finale. We're going to lay out the lining and the main part of the coat right sides together. And we will pin and then consequentially stitch from the bottom all the way up the side, along the top neck and neck band edge, and then to the bottom of the coat once again. Let's do it.
Next, we're going to open up the coat and we're going to understitch the facing of the coat as far up as we can. What understitching is, is from the wrong side. This is the facing side and this is the main coat. We're going to stitch the seam allowances toward the facing on a line just inside the, on the facing side, all, as far as we can across the entire jacket to prevent the facing from rolling out when we wear it in final form. So go ahead and, set, and start under stitching that all the way up until the band collar. Now that we have those two layers sewn together, we're just going to reduce some bulk on the seam allowances by trimming those down all the way across that seam that we just sewed. We're also going to clip into some of these curves just a little bit. On the curviest parts of the collar, we're going to clip up to and not all the way through. the seam allowance. That will release a teeny bit of tension. Next up, we're going to take the lower edge of both, of both bottom edges of the jacket, fold over the seam allowances, the seam allowance here, and we're going to stitch across this facing at about an inch and a half above the edge just from the edge here to the end of the facing. Now that we've sewn that lower edge here of the facing, we're also going to trim into it, just below the stitch line, like so. After you understitch that portion of the facing, we're gonna go ahead and turn the jacket right side out. Slip the sleeve lining into the sleeves. Turn the whole thing right side out and you should have it where just the opening edge is still unattached. We're going to press this, press this edge that we've sewn from the bottom all the way around the neckline and down through, pressing this part just really nicely flat with the seam inwards. A lot of manipulation at the iron at this point. I'm gonna poke out these corners as well. We'll come back to that. And then I've opened the jacket back up again with the insides facing upward and I've got the neck edge here, the neck band, and I'm, we're going to loosely just stitch together by hand the edges of the seam allowances here, which will prevent the facing part of the neck band edge from rolling out and the from rolling out. So I'm just going to loosely go ahead and tack these seam allowances together. It should hopefully take you no more than just five minutes to do. All right, I'm going to stop there, tie that off. Call it good.
up, we're also going to do some quick hand tacks at the shoulders and also the underarms. So this is the main coat, this is the lining. We've got wrong sides out. I still have the um, jacket kind of split inside out. And I'm going to align the shoulder seams here at the top and just do a couple quick hand stitches so that the lining stays in place properly. Okay, I'm gonna make a knot there. I'm now going to do the same at the bottom of the armhole here, lining up these seam allowances and just doing a couple quick stitches to keep these together in place so that when taking the jacket off, the lining doesn't get tempted to come inside out as well. There we have it, and do the same on the other side. Okay, just in case you weren't tracking on that last step, I uh, will just show you with the jacket right side out again. Here is the sleeve armhole. From the inside, I just tacked together the seam allowances at the top here and then at the bottom here. So that now, that won't be tempted to come apart. And I did that on both sleeves. Now that's done. All right, I'm gonna give you a quick tutorial about how to do a slip stitch by hand to be able to do a really nice finish that's invisible and really beautiful. You could also perhaps stitch in the ditch on the outside with your normal machine if you'd like to capture this fold. That's an option to you. I wouldn't recommend another line of stitching here, but again, that's completely a personal decision that you can make. So I've got my double threaded needle with a little knot at the end. First thing I'm gonna do is secure that knot kind of hidden. So I'm going to, from the back side, come up into from back to right into that little fold there and pull that through so that the knot and the excess kind of tucked away. And then to do a slip stitch, essentially, now that I've got my thread coming up here, I'm gonna take just a couple threads of the main, daily two-ish threads and then slip into the fold here. Load up another couple threads of the main. Should not go all the way through to the front. Into the fold, couple threads of the main, into the fold of the lining, pull that through. and you can see it's nearly invisible. Go ahead and do that all the way around. So to do the hem, I'm going to turn up the bottom of the coat by an inch and a half and blind stitch that in place with just mane to mane. You can do that by hand, you can use a sewing machine, you could also use a serger as I did. That will secure just the hems. So right now the lining looks like this and I'm going to fold it up that 5 eighths of an inch, place it 5 eighths of an inch from the bottom. I'll have this little bit of excess 
pin that down and hand stitch all the way across. Once your lining is secured for your sleeve as well as the inside of your hem, we've got just two steps left until we're all done. First thing is that we're going to top stitch one inch away from the edge of the coat all the way down from right below the collar all the way down. And this will be decorative stitching. So choose a thread color that you think um, would work well to either blend, you could switch thread colors three times, or you could do one color that is intended as an accent stitch. We're going to do that on both front and back, on both sides. So we're on to working on the snaps of the coat. I took the pattern pieces and I found the little dots that signified the markings for where the buttons should go. And then I actually used a little tool to punch a little hole through the fabric. This is what it looks like. It's basically a little fabric hole punch. There's probably lots of ways that you could punch a small hole. So now that we have the six buttons marked, actually I'm adding a seventh one to go to the bottom of the full length of the coat. We're going to install these heavy duty snaps. Again, the snaps look like this and they also come with a die setting kit or you have to buy a die setting kit that looks like this. All right, we're gonna show you how to install the snaps. So we're gonna start with the outside top gold buttons to begin with, and then we'll go back and do the backs of them to the other side. So choose which side you want to be the top. You'll notice the difference is essentially how big a gap you want in between these two angled pieces. See how it's a little wider with one side over the other? So choose what you prefer. I'm gonna do with this side at the top. First, we start with the snap tap. That's the side that's visible from the outside, the pretty side. And take the die setter, which is what the snap cap fits into. After that, we're going to take the back of the snap cap, which is the socket piece. There it is and you place that downwards and then hold this tool in place, which is a guide for us as we hammer this into place. Just make sure it's really secure. Basically the pieces of the snap cap come around and bent onto the socket as we hammer that into place. Next, we take the pieces for the bottom half of the snap the post piece and the socket piece. The post goes in the back of the snap against, I suppose, where your body would be touching the coat and then the stud goes on top. We're going to put the post in the die setter and then use the guide and then hammer that all in place very securely. Usually takes two or three knocks to get it solidly in place. And there we go, you'll see that is how a heavy duty snap works. Thank you for sewing along with me and I hope you really love and enjoy your Nomi Patterns ME 2058 coat. Don't forget to share and tag me if you do and enjoy.